So you're in your own business now, and and yes, sir. Uh, so how long have you been doing that particular business since you started? I've been certified uh, training for nine years now, but it's nine something years. something that I practiced with my friends back in college back then. So if you put that all together, include that about 11, 12 years. So you're careful, of course, you're eating and uh, does that cover dietitian where you can be a dietitian to some degree in advising? I know they say by law you're not supposed to, but I do because I don't believe it's a certain percentage of diet and workout. I believe they're both 100, 100. So mm -hmm. I do advise like with the eat. Wow. Well, you've come a long way. You, you <laughs> yes, sort sir. of, you represent some pro professional teams as well. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, and what are they? In the uh, El Paso Rhinos. The okay. hockey team here. The hockey team. Yes, sir. And uh, so you have a list of clients as well from other people as well. What yes. would you say are your most famous or uh, infamous? <laughs> I know you don't want to. I don't want you to say infamous and we're online. But yes. I mean, some of your most famous or the better known uh, clients. Better known clients aside from the team will probably be a lot of local business owners, honestly. Okay. Uh, well known business. I know Lawrence Hamadi Bell with okay. Mr. Reuter. I have, you know, a client that owns a major construction and demolition company. Don't want to say the name, but right. yes. yes. Yeah, yeah. And then like that. So a lot of like uh, well known business owners in the area. Wow. There was one other factor I, I, people may not know, but you also modeled. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> and I've seen you in the beard commercials. And, oh, yes, uh, sir. So how, how did you get into that? Oh, believe it or not, it was actually um, while I was working at uh, Chi Town Barbecue. There was <laughs> there was a lady at the barbershop across from us, or in the PX, that would bother me every day. Like, oh, you're handsome. Like, what are you doing working here? And I would just blow it off each day, honestly. Um, but finally, I got tired of hearing it, and I told her, I was like, all right, if I go and try it, will you leave me alone? Because it was just a constant you know, annoyance. <laughs> and then I just went to the agency um, that I found online and walked in and asked them about modeling and they signed me right on the wow. spot. Yes, sir. That's a blessing. Yes, sir. Now your dad, of course, I'm sure was a huge inspiration in you going into your own business as well. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Uh, Absolutely. Since he's been in business. Now you did uh, your, your wings and, and um, the wings, that, and my wife and I rave about those wings to yes, this sir. day. Yes, sir. Uh, and the flavors, of course. Uh, your wings were, the place was called? A Taste of Buffalo. A Taste of Buffalo. And how did you come up with that name? There's a national, uh, you know, Buffalo. We're from Buffalo, right, New York. Right. There's a annual cook-off, wing cook-off in Buffalo every year and it's called A Taste of Buffalo. So we took the name and took some of the ideas of the food that they would have at those different events and we created a restaurant. Wow. And is that the original place of Buffalo Wings? Buffalo Wings were originally, and there's a place called the Anchor Bar. I mean, with, with, so Buffalo is not Buffalo, the, the Buffalo animal. No, not the Buffalo animal. Okay, it came from Buffalo, well, New, New York. York. Yes, sir. Buffalo, New York. Uh, there's a small tavern or pub that they were a bar originally. They started with the original Buffalo wing. Wow. And... They were very good. They were very good. To this day, they fran they branched out and franchised. But the original idea has gone national and Ooh. international. And people now, they call them Buffalo Wings. Because of because. Buffalo, New York. Yes, sir. I don't think people know that. Yes. And I've never heard of that. And there's a Buffalo it. sauce. There's uh, the, the wing sauce that they put together with hot sauce and butter that came from that location. Wow. And they never patented it. They never patented it. They ne and therefore everybody else is getting rich. They could just imagine had they patented it. Yes, sir. Uh, it's like the uh, Chicago uh, uh, mix, which is cheddar cheese, popcorn, and caramel popcorn. And it, it's called, we call it the Chicago mix for a reason because it was, 
originally created by a guy in Chicago at mm. one of the baseball games, and he will sell them. And But he never patented. Wow. And as a result of that, of course, you got everybody else that got rich off of that. Had he patented that and knew that he could do that, mm -hmm. it would have brought him in millions upon, even probably billions to this day. Yes, sir. You know. But those are opportunities <clears throat> people miss because either they think, ah, oh, this is just something I'm doing. Yes, sir. But they never stop to think about how many people are out there that are vultures looking for great ideas from people who, like that guy, think it's just, oh, it's just a normal thing. Who, who wants this? Right. Obviously, if you're selling it and people are liking it and demanding it, then it's an obvious pro project that can happen and that uh, product is, is something that can reap millions of dollars. Yes, sir. So, but you got another thing going right now. You have a... Uh, uh, currently, we have Just Cheesecake Outlet. Just uh, Cheesecake Outlet. Just and, Cheesecake and, Outlet. And I hope that they'll be able to uh, put that on the screen so some of that stuff, even your stuff, and they can, other people be, want, want to patronize. Yes, sir. Uh, how did you come up with Just Cheesecake? Well, we've had several restaurants, uh, like the one he said he worked at, uh, Chi Town Barbecue. barbecue. Uh, and I can tell you how I came up with that name, but that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> well, we used to serve the cheesecake at these restaurants, uh, at A Taste of Buffalo, at Chi Town Barbecue. And it was a hit. And recipes that my wife came up with. Wow. And I can tell you this. You know, I am an avid fan of her cheesecake. And if people have never tasted her eggnog cheesecake, it's, I know it's seasonal, but it is one of the most incredible cheesecake yeah. flavors that you would ever have. And I know people say, well, I like going to Cheesecake Factory. This is authentic cheesecake. No cake is in it. It's just the idea that it's a cake, but it's cheese. It is incredible. But go ahead. Thank you. Yeah. And from... And do I get any royalties from that? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> it was responses like that, sir, that we said we needed to take that product to market. So we opened up a shop and we sell her cheesecakes out of that shop. Wow. And now it's just Cheesecake Outlet. Yes, sir. And you have one now, but you anticipate doing more than yes, one. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And uh, praise God, I can tell you this in the future. Uh, I'm a part of a an investment company that would love to invest in that company. Yes, sir. <laughs> you know. Yes, sir. God is doing a lot of things. What are some of the things that you all uh, would like to uh, discuss? Because I see you have my book. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, the book is... Dream big, start small, and uh, have you been reading the book? I've actually read it before. Oh, um, really? Yes, sir. And I know I had a few questions about one particular chapter. There's a lot of good points I got from it, but just um, on the subject of business, I just wanted to ask a few questions. Oh, okay. Okay. Yes, Shoot. Okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> let me just go on to word it right, so if you don't mind. So I know they're both coming from chapter 17, which is the gospel of entrepreneurship and uh -huh. creating wealth. And so just to add context to it, um, I've had a word spoken over me plenty of times from you and other leadership and pastors about opening my own business as far as a gym and with training and all that. So with me, I have a business that I structure around my faith. Mm -hmm. Not that I'm trying to sell God to make a quick dollar, but no, I'm making no, an experience. understandable. But in this chapter, I know that you're talking about or using an example of like Hobby Lobby, how if they were to call themselves a Christian business, like they would alienate those that are non-believers. Absolutely. And um, that there's no such thing as a Christian business, like business is business. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the first question would be uh, in that as a future faith-based gym owner, uh, how would I differ differentiate my business from alienating non-Christians through the experience I provide, since it's a faith-based? Uh, you know, if, uh, if it's a faith-based, and since you're saying it is, it is, uh, like I mentioned, there's really no such thing as a Christian business. Yes, you're sir. saying then that uh, 
what you should be saying, I'm a business person who happens to be a Christian. Okay. That's all it is. Yes, sir. But when you say I'm a faith-based, not a faith-based, but a Christian business, you're literally saying to others, I don't solicit your mm -hmm. services or, or not solicit your services, but allow you to come in here because if you want to do this or live a certain way, I can't service you. Yes. And that's not always the case. Uh, this is the odd thing with believers. They think that God doesn't do business. God does business with everybody. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Every single person. Jewish people does business with everybody. Mm -hmm. They believe, first of all, they have their own circle, mm -hmm. their own circle of, of business of yes, functionality. Uh, if it's, they have an ideal, they go to someone that is, they need a service, say a contractor, they find a Jewish contractor. Yes, sir. Then from that point, that Jewish contractor will find uh, subcontractors that are Jewish. That is a priority. They keep it within that circle. When they go financial, they go to Christian, or, or not Christian, I mean, but Jewish people. Mm -hmm. They're keeping it within that circle. Mm -hmm. The bottom line of their whole venture is that they fundle the profits to the charity. And what do you think the charity is? Jewish. The Jewish synagogue. Mm -hmm. It all goes, not all the profits, right, I'm right, just saying, right, yes, the sir. 10% right off the bat goes to the church. Not, they're not a church, but they believe in the synagogue. Mm -hmm. It fundles down to the synagogue. Here's the odd thing that most people don't realize. You can have a business concept, right? The Jewish people, the first thing they do, they go to their rabbi. Mm. They go to their rabbi and mm. they'll talk with their rabbi. I was telling uh, Jason one scenario of a guy that uh, he had a business, not had a business, but have a business. Yes, sir. And he went to his rabbi. He had a small business. And it was, he had the concept to do something other than what he was doing with the business. And the rabbi said, uh, asked him, so how much have you given to the, to the synagogue? He, had, he said the most he had given was uh, 25000 He said, I want you to believe God. Believe God and give $100,000. And he thought to himself, I I never had I never even thought of giving a hundred thousand dollars to the synagogue. He said the next question: Where does your children go to school? Very important. Yes. Well, mm -hmm. the children go to the 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 the, the, uh, the Jewish school, mm -hmm. and that Jewish school, most in fact all Jewish people in business normally fund all of their children, right. their education mm -hmm. process through their Jewish schools. So the rabbi said, okay. The guy went out, he believed God, told his wife, they believed God, came up and sold $100,000 for that year. Wow. And then he had, he had a, a big old blank check to wow. show it, right? And uh, the rabbi introduced him to another Jewish guy who attends the church, who is over financials, finances. He's like a president of a bank introduced him to him, and then when he met him, he brought him in, and the first thing that guy said was, how often do you attend the Jewish synagogue? The guy said, oh, I go every, uh, you know, what they call the sabbat, uh, you know, yes, and they sir. go to the Jewish synagogue. He said, then he asked him, literally, where do your children go to school? You know why they ask that? Because they believe that all of their business profits uh, or the 10 percent immediately should be all funneled towards Jewish uh, to keep mm -hmm. it in the Jewish yes, circle. Mm -hmm. So when that school needs computers, funding <laughs> is always there. Wow. They never go outside yes, sir. for anything mm -hmm. because it's all built within that circle. That's why they push everyone mm -hmm. to believe and go towards supporting the Jewish synagogue, which they don't get loans to build their, their synagogues. All the money is su supplied right there mm -hmm. wow. because they're pushing their people to go into business. Right. So when he went to the guy and the guy, he told him, yes, da, 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 da. And he said, uh, by the way, I was able to believe God 
and 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 give a hundred thousand dollars, my wife and I, to the synagogue. The guy gave him a loan, no interest. Wow. That's how That's Jewish people works, do right? it. Yes, yes. Yes. But see the concept with blacks, Hispanics, and even whites, we don't do it that mm -hmm. way. Right. So we don't have a, a circle right, per se. Right, right. So all of our money goes everywhere else. Now mm -hmm. white people will push theirs in their circles, yes, sir. but black people don't, yeah. uh, and Hispanics usually don't. Right. The percentage is very low or high in terms of putting the money out. So you're looking at over 90% of how mm -hmm. African Americans do business and how Hispanics do business, they're pushing it all out. When it comes to Asians, you, a real Asian restaurant, you don't see any Americans, mm -hmm. nor white or blacks, mm -hmm. working in those, those restaurants because the unemployment rate for Asian people is extremely low. Right. Everybody's working. Yeah, everybody's working. They keep them working within their yes, own sir. circles. Mm -hmm. We don't do that. So you asked me about the business. The ideal of business is business in general. Uh, when you can when you can no longer find someone in that circle to supply you, here's another idea. They said, if a Jewish person, if you have a problem with a Jewish person uh, that, that you did business with, normally they're tied to the Jewish synagogue. Right. Mm -hmm. That accountability is right there, and they get on them, and they'll say, "Hey, make it right with with so and so," and he does it. So he may rip everybody else off, you know, outside the circle, but he does right by Jewish people because yes, that accountability is within that circle, the synagogue, the schools, fellowships, whatever is going on, even hospitals, doctors, they send them to their own doctors. Mm -hmm. So the ideal is don't have it, and they don't call it a Jewish business, do they? No. 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 And rarely do you know it's Jewish owned. Yes. Right, but we go directly to the Jewish people and we will patronize their businesses. Right. You are doing something that we should support 100%, mm -hmm. right? Yes, right? Knowing, first of all, you're tithing into the ministry, you're giving into the ministry. Mm -hmm. But when we had the school, we had the school for 20 some years, don't forget. Uh, did we get major support? No, 25% of our own congregation supported the school. Uh, and that was just at the beginning. Mm -hmm. It went down as the church grew. Yes, sir. But because they didn't have the mindset to support mm -hmm. our circle so that our educational process could benefit our children down the road and going into the next generation. Uh, and it's a travesty to me. I think it's horrible when it comes to the body of Christ. Yes. Uh, and, and not just African Americans, because I think yes, the body sir. of Christ is just as selfish yes, as any other ethnic group can be. Yes. We don't support each other. But you are doing something. Don't call it a Christian business. Right. It can be faith-based. Yes, but you don't have to call, say it's a faith-based business. When they meet you, they'll know. Yes, sir. How do we usually know if a Jewish person owns a business if we met them? By the name. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a Jewish name. So we know, yes, oh, sir. yeah, that, that he's Jewish. <laughs> and we can understand. They're, they're not more beneficial than us. We ju they just apply the principles. principles. Yes, sir. Yes. That's all it is. So what you're doing is, whatever your business name is, I always try to encourage people, try to stay away from the churchy names. You know, uh, you, you want to sound as if your business is a, a franchise. Yes, sir. It's a well put together, thought out, tight name for your business. A catchy name, uh, like a McDonald's or, uh, you know. Mm -hmm. Most people don't even realize that even Mormons, they have their own circles. Wow. And they never, and I'm telling you now, Mormons do not and will not solicit outside to build their own churches. They're never in, in dire straits when it comes to money because they believe, number one, in the tithe. When you look at a, a Mitch Romney, Mitt Romney, mm -hmm. uh, who ran for president one year, 
uh, how wealthy he is. Do you not know all your Marriott's are owned by uh, Mormon people? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, your Albertsons, if you can shop there, then then wow. they they are owned by Mormons. Uh, I can go on and on and and, and mention stapled companies that we have in the U.S. Financial companies as well. They support their own and they build their own. This is what we're doing and believing God now. We're just at the very, very, very basement of this, uh, uh, Jason and I. Yes, our endeavor is so that we could fund the body of Christ. And it can start with us. But if we don't buy into it, you can't support someone that mm -hmm. won't buy into it. Right. Because if we're in the same boat, we all should be benefiting from the same source. If, we, if one goes down, we all should go down. If one succeeds, we should all succeed. That's how Jewish people believe it. So you, you want that business to do well? Number one, God's kingdom. That's the yes. number one thing, the church. Never exclude the church. Jewish people never exclude the rabbi nor the, uh, the synagogue. Now, don't believe me. Go and, and find out for yourself. Oh, that's the truth. Yeah. I mean, from insurance, and I mean, we deal with someone who's Jewish and uh, uh, on, on our insurance and pay thousands of dollars. We get great service, uh, and Jewish people would do business with other people. They don't, money is money. Right. Yes. Money has no personality or ethnicity. That's money is money. You just want to keep those profits within the circle that benefits you all more so than what benefits them first. You see, mm -hmm. yes, sir. that's the priority. So start your business or get, get it going, but you got to also open your mouth and make sure that people know, hey, this is not about you just saying, hey, we're a Christian person, da right. da Yes, sir. Because I'm going to tell you who could sabotage your business more than anyone other christians yes, yes because they'll make it oh yeah this is a christian business and uh you know and then the other person that is not a christian or you know he's thinking oh i don't want to go over there because even though the god may work work me out he may be pushing jesus down my throat <laughs> you know? right and that's not the ultimate aim right. you know right. not when it comes to business business is first in terms of what you're doing. You're doing it for God. But business is about transacting, you know. And when that door opens, you'll know it. Yes, sir. I hope I say something. <laughs> no, that yeah. was good. And you actually answered my second question. Oh, <laughs> within the end. Yes, sir. So, thank you. <laughs> yeah, praise God. Praise God. Brian, if, in case people don't know, this is a father and son, uh, not granddaddy and grandson. <laughs> no. no. Yeah, but he's just great. He looks young. Look at him in the face. He has that young look. Uh, but that's his son. And you are now, what, 30? I'll be 32 on the 28th oh, of this month. Oh, my God. Yeah, you you guys are getting old. <laughs> yes, oh, my word. It's been 32. a while. 32, yeah, it's 32. And you're? 55. 55, wow. Yes, a young 55. You turned 55 at 656 in August. Yes, sir. Mm. In terms of being... Uh, finding balance in your devotion to ministry for yourself. Mm -hmm. I, I, would, I would ask this question of yourself. I know that you've been in business. You've had restaurants. You've had um, insurance. How do you draw the line? Motivational speaking, starting, doing conferences. Yes, sir. <laughs> books, several books. Books, quite a few quite books. Quite a few books. <laughs> yeah. How do you draw the balance in your responsibility as a pastor, which is 24-7, and devoting enough time and attention to cultivating your business to where it can compete on a, on a, on a regular market? Like... Not just saying, well, it's, it's a project or it's, it's a hobby. You take it to a competitive level. How, do you, how did you draw a balance between those two commitments? 
I, I, you are asking a very good question. It's not a difficult question and it's not hard to, uh, to understand the way I'm going to explain it. Uh, my life in, involves everything. Just think about this. During the course of a day, you wear a title. How many titles do y'all wear? Business owner, business owner, business what owner. else? Father, 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 husband, 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 son, deacon, son. deacon, servant, uh, janitor, okay. electrician. Yeah. Now, during the course of the day, do you eat? Yes, sir. Do you go to the bathroom? Yes, sir. Yes. Do you read things? Yes, yes sir. Do you do a job? Yes, sir. Do you? I, what am I saying to you? It's all a part of what we do. I think when we sort of separate things in mm -hmm. a sense, we sort of categorize it as if it's not involved, encompasses the whole thing. Mm -hmm. it, to me, it's life. Yes, sir. That's how it is. Just imagine Jesus. He, is a, he was a carpenter. Now, he's, he didn't stop being a carpenter. He just shifted from building furniture and housing, if that's the case, if he did housing, to just building lives. Same thing with Peter. I'm going to turn you from a fisher of fish to a fisher of men. men. Same thing. So the concept to me in my mind is not different. I, I mean, I, I, I got I to gotta eat. I gotta, sometimes I do get in there and fix a sandwich or I may fix some chili. Or, you know, <laughs> everything is within that time frame. And I can, I can cook and still have ideas about certain things or, oh, man, this is a good thing. Let me jot this down real fast. That's what I do. Right. So even if I'm at a movie, I'm enjoying the movie, but I'm also getting something out of that movie because I don't want to do anything that has no real relevancy right. for me. Uh, if it's just enjoying it, it takes, uh, it's always something. You can learn something in every situation. You can learn it from your little baby. You start picking up little things and all of a sudden, man, it becomes a message. <laughs> you yes. know? Mm -hmm. it's, and it, it also helps you in your business. Yes, sir. Everything in life to me is steered towards everything we do. So life is about godliness and the character by which we portray that godliness is how we encompass everything about life. I breathe, I hear, I see, I walk, I, everything is life. So I don't think I should at any time just, uh, not just categorize, but uh, what do you call it? Just, I forget, I'm, I'm going to look Compartmentalize. Yeah, compartmentalize. Yes, sir. Because everything to me runs into everything else, mm -hmm. honestly. Now that's me. You know, uh, when it comes time and I'm at a conference or the same thing, I'm picking up. I mean, if, I'm not at a conference all day long, so I, you know, so my mind is also working on other things. While I'm there, I'm giving it my attention until it demands none of my attention. Mm -hmm. that, yes. That's when I'm saying, oh, yeah, this, I, he's not saying anything. So <laughs> <laughs> I can take that point and begin to stretch it, and then yes, I sir. blank out everything else. You know, mm -hmm. I chew the meat and spit out the bones. Yes, sir. You know. Yes, sir. But is that easy to understand? Yes, sir. Because yes, yes, you sir. do it naturally. naturally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Naturally, that's how it is. I'm a husband to me as a boy, I'm naturally. I don't say, this is what I've heard years ago. I'm glad you mentioned this again. And they would say, what hat, am I, what, what right. hat are you wearing today? Mm -hmm. uh, talk to me as my husband, not as a pastor. How can, I talk, how can Jesus talk to us without being Jesus? Right. Mm -hmm. What hat does he, he wears it 24-7. Yes. You know, I don't know what... It's just people, and I think that's why people can deal with mental issues mm -hmm. and breakdowns, mm -hmm. and they're stressed out and stuff like that. I can say I've never f felt that sense of being overwhelmed or stressed out. I felt like I've had to do various things where I said I have to recoup and sit back real fast and rethink this thing. Mm -hmm. That's the best way to do it yes, instead sir. of, hey, I don't speak it when I'm burnt out. 
Oh, it's too much on me. Man, go to war. That's too much if you want to look at it that way. Just imagine what the mindset you have right. to have right. in a war situation. Uh, and it's similar to walking down the streets of Chicago. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to say, you just can't walk down the streets. you got to have that mindset yes, sir. of thinking ahead. It's just like you're driving. You don't drive just for you. You drive for, for that other guy. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. life, man. No, that's good. That's good. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's good. I know that... Uh, You've looked into, what was it like having your own restaurant, two restaurants? What was it like for you to, did you ever aspire to do that? Or was it just something you said, I want to tr not try it, not, not how do I say this, not try it, but uh, what made you open two restaurants? I've always had a, a, an idea of owning restaurants and just businesses in general. In general. You know, I felt like, not not felt, but I sensed, hey, the timing was right. Meeting you years ago, uh, when I saw what you did with A Taste of Buffalo, my heart, first of all, went out to, just to support you. Mm -hmm. If it was nothing else at that time, if you can recall, I wanted to support you all. Mm -hmm. My wife and I, and I can say this with all my heart, my wife as well, it was not about getting back anything. I, I, you have the idea. Some things people naturally have in them. You, to me, you naturally have cooking in you. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, uh, it's just a whole different story. In my mind, <laughs> I cannot get in there. As, like you all can do it like natural and, and, and enjoy it and, and know how to do things. And, and in my mind, I'm looking at you and I'm mesmerized. That's amazing, isn't it? <laughs> yes, sir. Because some people are, they have that intrinsic or innate ability sewn into them mm -hmm. at the beginning. Like you would probably say, how the heck is he doing all that? Right? Mm -hmm. To me in the kitchen, oh my God, you got to know it is an art, you know, and to do what you're doing with, with bodies. Right. That is a Discipline. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. It's a discipline. You got to be disciplined in, in a certain way. You're disciplined in that way, and you can put together. I can say, brother, I, I want something to eat. You say, oh, don't worry about it. I got you. If you said that to me, brother, I'm like, when <laughs> uh, do I have any extra time? Because uh, I would know how to put things together. I wouldn't say I would know. Yes, sir. But I don't have the desire to go in the kitchen and put things together. I've seen you all put, it's like my grandmother or my mother at times, they could take the least of things and make a meal out of it. Brother, <laughs> that's, that's you all, you know. So, and I certainly, when, you, when I say the discipline to do what you, it's <laughs> how long have you been doing it now, 12, 10, 12 years? Uh, training other people, yes. Right. Yes, sir. So you're talking eating, yes. right? You have to eat a certain way. Yes, sir. You know what functions to develop parts of the body. Yes, with, sir. With, you know, you know what to do. Yes, sir. Not me. <laughs> I would say, <laughs> I would say, you want me to work on my chest? All I know is to do push-ups. Yes, sir. Do about five of them, and then I'm looking in the mirror and say, oh, yeah, it looks like it's coming together, the blood is flowing. Oh, yeah, the t you know. Yes, sir. So it's a certain discipline. You know it's a marathon. Absolutely. I want it to be a sprint. Yes. <laughs> because my mind is, I'm not geared for that because that's not what my design is. I'll do what I have to do. I'll believe God for the supernatural. You keep believing for the natural. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so my thing is, what do you do to lose weight? If you want to lose weight, what do you advise people? And do you say, do you want to lose weight and gain muscle? Or do you want to lose weight and to look good or whatever? Is there a purpose behind 
why someone should lose weight and what they should know? Uh, yes, sir. And I'm glad you actually kind of phrased it like that because a lot of people will just say something out of, you know, being cliche, like, oh, I want to lose weight. I want to get in shape. But I asked everybody through consultations, like, what does that look like to you? Like, do you know exactly where you want to head? Like, why do you want to get to that? Like, what do you want to feel like? Mm -hmm. And so from there, the next step I do is we analyze and kind of assess, like, what's holding you back from getting there? Everything from, you know, habits, whether it's the way you eat, whether it's um, your mental state, even uh, alcohol, just whatever it is. So anxiety can affect your weight. Oh, absolutely. Yes, Go sir. Ahead. Yes, sir. So that's to kind of piggyback off uh, what I was saying earlier. I like to not only train people, but make it an experience in an environment. Um, unfortunately, you know, businesses that I've worked under in the past, they make it kind of like a chaotic environment from you know, the type of vibe they give off to mm. the music they play with cursing in it Absolutely. to, you know, people dressing a certain way or talking a certain way using curse words and Absolutely. things of that nature. So I believe my job is to make my clients feel as comfortable as possible and build them up mentally and mm -hmm. emotionally because that does have an effect on your body, like psychologically and physiologically as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Like it could shut down your immune system, your hormonal system. So I always take all those things um, into consideration. Mm -hmm. So if, you know, somebody's coming in and I sense, you know, it on them that they may be anxious or have anxiety or depression, um, I ask them about it, but in a, you know, comfortable manner, but I, I'm sure to address it because mm -hmm. it's part of, you know, the whole goal is to improve that. Yeah, I, I think uh, most, of course, people like me and, and us, <laughs> <laughs> And I know you've worked with your dad, and your dad probably just said, look, I'm going to uh, just do this in my dreams. <laughs> You're making it too hard for me. <laughs> but uh, people like us, the same thing. We yes, don't sir. have that mentality. That's why you're a trainer. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And your job and your ability is to know how to train a person. Yes, sir. You got to pick up on the personality you got to, and those are things you do in business. You got to pick up when you're listening, what you're doing is profiling the person. Am I right? Yes, sir. At the same time you're profiling them, you're putting, putting together a process that could help them. That could, that when you pick up that personality, you can know, okay, that they're not going to lean this much over this side yes, of discipline. Mm -hmm. So let me work with them and build them into this. Uh, and make it where they feel like, hey, I'm making some progress. Because that's the key. The unfortunate thing is we look for progress after the first day. Yes. <laughs> How do you convince people like us that, uh, you know, you're not going to have the muscles you have after two days right. or the chest <laughs> that you have or the, you know, the, the, you know, I'm looking at your dad, his face is slim. You're just slim but full. At the same time. <laughs> you know, it looks like you're healthier. You know, he's just, he just lost weight and, and it's just going down like, no. <laughs> Help. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Was your dad, is your dad hard to train? Be honest. No, I'll say this. Back when I did <laughs> train my dad, um, I didn't know as much as I do now. Yeah. So Key. I was using, you know, a template that I was using for other people of a different demographic. Now I could definitely take him on if he was open to that. But <laughs> Well, back then I did make Dad, my mistakes. that's a good thing. Now, <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, go ahead, bro. <laughs> yeah. I did make my mistakes back then, but it was a learning process for me. And just to add a quick story, on my first clients ever, um, like they weren't <laughs> the people I was aiming to get because as you may remember, I worked at Gold's Gym initially. Yeah. So leaving school, you know, training my friends, like I said, they were all athletes uh -huh. like in college. So there were teenagers to young, early 20s. So I think I'm gonna get all the young guys, athletes, and the manager of the gym assigns me my first clients. And it was a 70, wow. 73 and a 75 year old couple. And one just had a knee replacement, oh. the other had a hip replacement, and I had no idea like what so I was doing. So you didn't profile them to that degree at all? No, sir. Like I, I gave them like a <laughs> very low impact <laughs> athlete workout, but it was the best thing that ever happened to me, honestly, because it opened my eyes 
and show me that like if I truly want to be about this and take this business further, I have to, you know, educate myself in different areas. Absolutely. Whether I go down one niche or, you know, learn how to train everybody, like I need to continue my education. Yep. Absolutely. Your yes, threshold is not the same as theirs. Right. right. Uh, yes, sir. And in most cases, this is where, uh, you know, I re remember saying uh, when we had the restaurants and uh, I said, Brian, we can't cook what we like. We got to cook. We want to make money. We got to cook what they like. Yes. You know? <laughs> yes, sir. That's key. And, and sometimes you just think that everybody should like what you like. Right. Taste buds mm -hmm. are not the same. Mm -hmm. And so you are in business for the sake of others. Yes. Not for your sake. Yes, sir. You're right. trying to get them. You can't buy and make yourself rich. Right. You, know? yes, you want their money. And that's just, this is why I said, I say this, and I don't know if it's in this book with, with Building Wealth. It's in one of my books or in one of my messages that... The ideas and the concepts in your head is always worth the dollars in somebody's pockets. Yes, yes. That creates the circular economy. Yes. Because this is how we feed one another. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, man, it's key. So I would love for your business to just boom because do you see yourself where you become more than just one gym? Uh, yes, sir. And I'll be honest, it wasn't until recently that I saw that I had to break that, you know, mindset of being average or, you know, Thank hanging you. with everybody. So it wasn't until probably last year, honestly, um, when mm. you spoke a word over me where I had to forget about the past, forget about the past mistakes, what I've been told, what I saw, what everybody else is doing mm -hmm. and really focus on what God placed in me yeah. and to use that. Yeah, because so. you look the part. Mm -hmm. <laughs> No, seriously. Thank you, you, sir. You, it's hard for a fat guy to tell me, <laughs> you know. It works in the restaurant business. Yeah, yeah. Easy, doesn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. So people don't realize those factors yes, play sir. an important part yes, in sir. presenting your business yes, sir. and yourself. You got to mirror it. You model your business. So you can't be fat and out of shape and you're telling me I, I'm your trainer. You know, yes, even sir. though you can be in great, great shape, shape as yes, a sir. As a heavy guy, yes, yes. but you don't look the part. Right. And that's where you're going to lose a good amount of your business because mm -hmm. people are going to judge you how you look. Yes, yes sir. sir. You're doing a good job on that, oh, man. Thank you, sir. Great, great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the cheesecake, you know, I, I, I remember going to your cheesecake place. Now, I've always said, and you know, that my wife and I said, you are great with colors. <laughs> I don't think you Thank give you. yourself as much credit uh, sometimes. And, and I mean, throughout the years, and we've said, no, brother, just come up with the concept. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay, I'll just change that a little bit. But that's right on it. Yes, sir. I don't like to be the one initially always to come up with the full dream, uh, uh, thought process or the ideal or the concept. Mm -hmm. Uh, I need someone else, and I bounce off of that, and yes, I sir. say, okay, oh, I think this will work here. We need to bring this in there, put some white in there, man. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, but your your color palette to me is great. Go into that rest, uh, uh, just cheesecake outlet. Yes, sir. You know what? When I saw it, yes, the sir. mustard colors, the, the the colors were like, this is franchise right here. I love it. I love those colors. I I try to do something different than Chi Town, mm. different than a taste of buffalo. Mm. Because it was dessert. Yeah. And so I I look for clean, minimalist uh, logo, mm -hmm. minimalist in colors and and cut sharp edges. So I, I like it. I really do. And we've got positive feedback from the public as well. Mm. Um Several business owners thought it was a franchise. Well, and it will be a franchise. Yeah, yeah. But and it a, is a it franchise. Is, it is a franchise. Yeah. <laughs> it's just early stages, that's all. That's it, absolutely. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, I, I mean, so when it comes to business, I believe in business. I believe yes, in, uh, I, I think I shared it not too long ago on the, the Hebrew term avada is a term that means business. 
And it's also the same word for worship. Yes, sir. Oh, wow. So yes, God sir. looks at it that way. Your business is also your worship. That's why the Bible says, present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Mm -hmm. That's your business. Yes. That's the business of life, the business of your marriage. It's all for his glory and his honor. So we should never separate it right. as if this is just for me mm -hmm. and this is for God. Everything is for God. That's how we have to see it. That's, uh, that revolutionized the way I thought. Because when I first met you, mm -hmm. I had aspirations of opening a business. But I didn't know that God also viewed that as a kingdom asset. Absolutely. I, I didn't know that. I thought that I had to do this over here and maybe I, it would please God. But I found out that God wants the best for me. And then that's when I learned about Jeremiah 29 and 11. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And then housing and, and you know, hey, buying a house or doing this. Being an owner is a lot better than being someone that is employed, especially when you have the idea to do it. Yes. You know, you, it, it would be bad to me if you got just cheesecake and say, all right, uh, you, I'll work in it for you. No, that's your idea. Right. Yes. That's your concept. You're literally giving it away to somebody else. And that's what, that, that is what normally happens when we don't know how to do business and don't know how to transact. We sell our services right. when we should not never sell, or that's the services, we sell our concepts and people will take advantage of it. And that's, that's, that is the difference to me between that consumer consciousness and the person who's an entrepreneur, that the mindsets are entirely different. Mm -hmm. When I got out the army, I never worked for anyone. I was 23 years old. Uh, and it wasn't because I was a rebel. I just mm -hmm. never saw myself that way. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and so I was a pharmaceutical uh, personnel <laughs> dealing <laughs> drugs at the time. <laughs> Street pharmacy. I mean, real drugs, you know. Uh, but I have never, I just never saw myself because I never had a job before I went into the Army because I always dealt drugs. So I, even awesome. going into the Army, I was an entrepreneur because I was <laughs> dealing drugs in the military. And that was from basic training until I got born again. Yes, sir. You know, uh, even though I was younger, I was stupid, didn't understand the consequences as well. But I understood business and I, what I didn't want to do. Yes, sir. It just wasn't in me. And, uh, you know, going into ministry, full-time ministry was after I went into insurance. Insurance is really what helped me yes, sir. to become a better person to understand ministry. Because I think going into ministry, sometimes you, you cheat yourself and the people out of, this is why so many churches are under a certain number and they never, the church income never rise beyond a certain point because the pastor who had a great vision don't understand the principles of business mm -hmm. because the church is a business. Now, now some people will say, well, the church is not a business. Well, let's just say it this way. The church has to do business. Right. Yeah. Yes, sir. We don't understand how much the church is a business. And this is where, this is what I believe God has, was, had given me that the whole concept Mm -hmm. of the gospel is surrounded by transacting yes, and that's why Jesus said I bought you with a price and that means there's transaction there's an exchange he had to give his blood and ransom for our oh, wow. salvation that's why he said I bought you with a price you mm -hmm. are not your own you don't have the right to choose what you want you don't know what's best for you right but he does. So I learned that principle because being in, uh, in, in, in the insurance industry, knowing the, pers uh, the concept of selling, oh man, what is the gospel? Yes, sir. 
you're not, you're not out there peddling no. it, but you're, you're selling, selling the concept of what God through Jesus Christ has done for us. Yes. You got to be convinced of that yes. first in order to sell so. that to others. And when you do, you know that they're not always reading or listening to what you say. They're feeling how you say it and they see how you say it. Mm -hmm. So the passion you relate in your articulation of that message, it transcends greater in depth into their hearts and their comprehension than we can ever possibly imagine someone just trying to sell you a car. Right. You know, it's not the same. When you believe so deeply in what you are pushing, That's right. it changes how people receive because they think you care. And just like you, you got to know, you got to learn how to present even your cheesecake where if you're not passionate about it, imagine what you're going to put out there because in general, the general belief is this. We think people just respond to what you say. It's the aura and in, mm -hmm. in the way you say it yes, and sir. the representation. I remember talking with one pastor. He said, oh, the, the message was great. Uh, and I was talking, I've talked with many pastors throughout the years. And I said, wow, so how many people got saved? Or how many people responded? How many people were crying, you know? And he said, well, no, it was just a good message. Mm. When Jesus preached, how many people responded? The, the response right. is what tells you what people are getting. And oftentimes, if you're not sold out to what you're doing, people are picking it up. Mm -hmm. If I say, and I'm, and, I'm, and I'm talking about one of my books, and I say, ah, oh, yeah, it's one of the books I've written, you know. Yes, sir. Right. They're going to say, oh, I guess, you know, that sounds like a good title. Ah, okay. Yes, they're going to walk off, and yes. they're not going to buy the book. Or you say, oh, now look, I, I've been married to this woman who prepares a cheesecake. For how long have y'all been married? 34 years. 33 years. I've been married to this woman for 33 years. And I can tell you this. This cheesecake makes me do flips. I am, I don't love her because of the cheesecake, but if I, I had to, I would, that cheesecake would make me love her. <laughs> and I'm sold out on it. When you hear me talking about your, your chicken, mm -hmm. how convinced Oh, Do you, I sound? You love it. You love I it. am so convinced <laughs> that chicken is so incredible and the flavors that people are like, oh, I got to buy that. I got to try it because I'm selling it, not intentionally, but because I love that cheesecake. Yes. I mean, the, uh, the chicken, your wings. Now, wings are a dime a dozen. Flavors aren't. No, they're not. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the misconception of most people that start a business is that they can go out and get a business loan. What would, what would you recommend would be the first initial steps to financing a business? Let's say he wanted to open a gym. How would you recommend that he go about that? You are speaking a very good question. Um, Jason can tell you, Jason went to school, got his degree, his bachelor's, his undergrad in finance, and then his master's. So he, he has an MBA. And uh, he came to me once about it. And I said, Jason, and I ministered this in my Dream Makers mm -hmm. 99. I said, believe God because someone will finance your dream. Always, what you want is to always use somebody else's money. Yes, sir. Right? That's the whole concept. When you don't have the cash, the liquidity, how, how are you gonna start? So you have to use somebody else's money. You don't wanna necessarily always think that you gotta use somebody's or get a loan, right? Mm -hmm. right. Uh, you got some people out there, you got uh, capital ventures, you got people that will really invest in you where it's not a bank loan. Yes, sir. Really. So what happened with Jason is that 
the company hired him and said, we'll put your office together, did everything that he needed. Huh. He never had to put out a dime for it. Huh. So the same thing. You remember when uh, when I did, now the way I did Shot Town Barbecue, if you remember, we had just closed A Taste of Buffalo, but we still had the website up, mm -hmm. okay? Fort Bliss at the time was having, this is a good oh, let story. me just, in fact, let me, I don't want to say the name, yes, sir. but this, this elaborate government facility, <laughs> <laughs> and you can cut that out, yes, sir. okay, this elaborate facility was putting together like an outside kind of mall, and they needed restaurants and stuff like that, but they weren't taking anyone except franchises, mm -hmm. but I just felt in my heart, I want to go there. Now, this is something that just came. You, you, you ever mm -hmm. read the scripture? In the last days, your old, men, your old men will dream dreams, your young men will see, see visions. visions. That's what it was. When you get it, it's like, bam, there it was. I just knew that I knew that I knew. I didn't know how, so I called. Little did I know when I called, I got the person that was over the whole thing. Wow. And I said, I would like to uh, bring my business out there. And the guy was talking to me over the phone. Now, we didn't have a Shy Town barbecue. <laughs> I didn't even know, have it in my mind. You didn't have the name. I didn't have a name. I only had, a, had it in my spirit, right? Not the name, just the business. <laughs> and uh, I thought, uh, okay, he said, Oh, so do you have a restaurant now because we're only accepting franchises? I said, well, it's not a franchise now, but it's a part of one of our restaurants and, and we've owned three already. And, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and he said, oh, where's the, uh, and I, sh I said, go to a taste of Buffalo. I forgot where, where the, mm -hmm. the, 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 uh, the, the, the. What do you call it? The URL? The, the URL. Mm -hmm. and see, he knows that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and so he saw it. He said, oh, my God. The, oh, that looks so good. So knowing you, you're putting up another restaurant, what would it be called? In that moment, it seemed like it was a stretch of minutes. But it wasn't. It was just a few seconds that I said, oh, yeah, I'm from Chicago. It's going to be called Chi-Town Barbecue. <laughs> I was like in my spirit, what the heck? <laughs> he said, oh, that sounds great, Chicago barbecue. I said, oh, yeah, you would absolutely love it. It's, Chicago barbecue is different than everybody else's barbecue across the country. Kansas City is supposed to have great. And I'm talking all this stuff, right? It's amazing. I'm not, all I have is... The idea, and I'm sold on the concept of what God put in my mm -hmm. spirit, mm -hmm. and then didn't have the money. Didn't have the money the first. He said, well, you know, we'll, we'll go ahead and we'll talk to you mm -hmm. further, and da, 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 da. The wonderful thing about that is that I was able to use and convince them to give me more money, over 100000 plus, in their tenant improvements wow. and do the building practically with that. Wow. That's not a loan, no. essentially. It's worked out in the, the, the term terms, of, the, yeah. of the lease. The rest of it, I had to believe God for it. That was <laughs> boss, though. That, huh? was, that was boss. I wish, <laughs> no, I wish everyone could see what you just unfolded. And you it saw it first. It right? happened just like that. <laughs> really? Didn't know, didn't know <laughs> anything about anything. <laughs> we didn't have recipes. We didn't have anything. <laughs> I said, Brian, I need some recipes. Let's yeah. come <laughs> That's how God. When you ate there, there, was the food good? Oh, not to be biased, but yes. You worked there. Yes. Was the food good after you worked there? Yes, still was. Ah, that food is. <sighs> And people are still asking to mm -hmm. this day about Chi Town Barbecue. Yes, sir. They still ask me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so the ideal is someone will always finance your dream, is how the presentation is, right. is put together. And if you don't believe it, 
you can't sell it. That's good. That's uh, good. So That's good. I, I believe in the gospel across the board. Whatever God places th place within me, he'll give me what to say, how to say it. And this, I take that verse literally. He will give, the Holy Spirit will give you in that hour what to say. Yes, that, now, it may be in the context of if you're going to law, going to the law, and you have to somehow right. represent yourself, because it was in reference to that. But it's also in anything. Yes, sir. He'll give you what to say. He'll give you what to say in that hour. And when you hear the testimony of like uh, one, I told, told the testimony of uh, over in Russia, they have underground churches. And uh, uh, the lady was going to, and it was at night, but she, it was past the curfew. And she was caught out by a soldier past the curfew. And so the guy asked her, where are you going? And as a Christian, you can't lie, right? Right. And you can't validate a lie. Right. Even though you think it's the do good. No, you never do wrong to cover the wrong. Right. And so she said, Lord, what do I say? Excuse me, what do I say? And she's just thinking in that moment. It seemed like forever, she says, but it was just in that moment. Where are you going? And she said, my brother died, and I'm going to the reading of the will. That's what the Spirit of God yes, gave sir. her. What, is, what was she talking about? Jesus Christ died, mm -hmm. and the will is the word, word of God. Yes, sir. And he says, oh, dear, go ahead and let it go. Wow. So the Spirit of God will give you so many things in business, yes, life, sir. everything in general. Nothing in your life that's based on that deals with you should be opposite of the covenant that God made with Abraham. Yes, we are covenant children of Abraham. Just like Jewish people, we're chosen. The Bible says we're part of the ch chosen generation. So we can't think that God is not involved in every aspect of our lives except sin. But he's also willing to forgive us of them, yes, sir. Yes, of all sir. our sins. And so, hey, business, I, we got to support one another. And yes, I'm encouraging people, go to Just Cheesecake. Go to, uh, it's not called Dumbbells, the Dead Listers. <laughs> what, is, what, what, what is your business called? It's called Fit by Faith, Personal Fit Training. Fit by Faith. Yes. And, and if you had to come up with a different name, what would you call it? That's a great question, sir. I haven't put thought into it. Yeah. Okay. Is that, is that name legal? Did you get the EIN for it and all that good stuff? Uh, unregistered business name. Okay, right. you have an EIN though. No, sir. You got to get all that. Yes, sir. All of that is important because you need to write off stuff. Yes, sir. Everything. Yes. Business is about write off too. Absolutely. <laughs> yes, sir. That's in the next segment. Yeah, that's the next <laughs> subject. And a good, have a good CPA. But Jason is a good person that is, he heard me over the years. And uh, I, I think he has our, my heart in where... I believe this body needs to go, mm -hmm. uh, this part of the body yes, and how we are an instrument to spread and we, we're breaking it. We got to break ground on that and uh, he knows it, I know it, you know it and yes. I pray every person in the body of Christ who has a legitimate business or product or services, not someone that's just, you know, doing something on the side, mm -hmm. I mean a legitimate business where we can benefit the body of Christ. Because if I can create a business that can employ others, I want to employ our own first, but when mm -hmm. you're jacked up, right. I can't use you. You'll right. be just like a heathen to me. Mm -hmm. So I can't use you because you'll jeopardize a business. Therefore, you're jeopardizing other people's income as right. well. Yes, sir. Yes, so sir. I love you guys, man. I wish we love had more too, time sir. in this. God bless you all. We're Thank moving you, forward Thank you, the things of God, and I hope you watch us next time. And when you put your business together, go to your re local rabbi. That's your pastor. <laughs> and all you don't need to sit down with me. Just tell me what you want. God will give it to me, and that's it. And you go with that, and then don't just take it for granted. Ask God, how do I apply it, and keep coming. 
and you'll get it. Glory to God. I love you all. God bless you. Bye-bye.